Hey folks, how are we doing? It is a full scale slurry spread at the minute. We had Henry here yesterday with uh, the umbilical, popped out the other tank. Um, this is what I was saying in that video. Uh, this is our overflow tank. What I was saying in that video, we're going to. Um, I'm taking this up the road, not very far, but I'm taking it up the road and putting it on the field, uh, probably about half a mile away. So we'll get hooked up and uh, get filling. Right, so while that's filling quick, uh, we'll get a quick look at the tank. This is, uh, well you join me about halfway through the day, I think I've done, this is the sixth load I think it'll be. I've not looked up in the tank yet, I'm going to have a quick look while it's loading. At least, um, we can have, we haven't got a full tank to sort of get rid of this here if you know what I mean. Of course a bit breezy. Um, because normally this tank is full, but uh, as you can see, despite the wind, it's uh, well, actually, it's now about half full, about halfway up. And you can see the tide mark there. We've had not quite a foot out, I shouldn't think. Uh, I'll say this is me sixth load, I think. I think about six loads. So, see again, you notice how watery it is here. That's because we separate the muck out of the slurry. So we end up with just lovely sort of, uh, lovely nice liquid slurry rather than any solids in it. You don't get the crust, you see. Ain't gonna be far off full now. It don't take long, especially when you've got a head on the tank lot. You know, there you go. So it changes, um, changes noise. Open the, open the vent valve to suck the pipe clean. Shut the valve at the back of the tanker. Put the back pump in neutral. Noisy thing. Let that vent. Now we can whip the pipe off. Uh, obviously I'm on uh, the one of the T7s, the newer of the two. Um, which is kind of a bit of a pain really because this one hasn't got um, any sort of guidance on it. The the older one, sort of Richard's one, um, that has got uh, Trimble guidance on it so it um, makes this job a lot easier because of course with the dribble bar, unlike the splash plate, the dribble bar you can't accurately see where your last pass was because it sort of puts it you know, sort of on the ground rather than on top of the grass or the crop or whatever you're putting it on. And you can't really see it very well, so it does make accurate application not so easy. But that, that is an issue, um, you know, possibly might get sorted uh, fairly soon. I've got, so I'm looking at a couple of um, uh, auto steer systems uh, um, as soon as they. Um, well, as soon as we can organise it, basically, from coming, you know, we'll have a look, lot. So, um, and that'll be an interchangeable one. So, if you had to go on, you know, the TW, the Fast Track, or the T7, like, you know, and that'll be got, uh, not guidance, that'll be auto steer, so um, even more accurate. But, uh, yeah, so we're, we're without the comfort of the Fast Track, because, of course, she's still at the menders. Um, no progress as yet since the last video when I said like, you know, I need to give them a ring. I haven't rung them yet, so uh, to find out what, uh, you know, where we are and what the crack is like. But uh, you know, it's, uh, we can you know do without it. Like, I mean, it always was a, you know, it's not a farm tractor. It's one of my tractors, isn't it? So um, it's not like the farm can't operate without it or the TW. Like, you know, they. They did before I was about, and uh, they will do after, like, you know what I mean? So, <clears throat> it does just uh, give more, you yeah, know, flexibility. Yeah, obviously, the more tractors you've got, you know, you're less swapping about, you have to do, like, 
Um, we would have uh, mucked out the compound today, um, which is this tractor's job, which is why she's actually so dirty, because she does some up runs. Um, but uh, of course, we've got it on here, so we can't do the muck. So if we had the fast track was here, that would no doubt, I'd have that on the tanker. I'd be lovely and <laughs> comfy. Um, and this would be free to do that work. So you, you, you see where the, the extra machines come in handy in that respect sort of thing. All right, we will uh, unfold. All right, so flip the control box to mass rate. I want to link the tablet to the flow meter on the tanker at the back. There you go, that's linked up now. Now we can engage the macerator with the same spool because we've flipped it over um, on that. That switch does a hydraulic change over on the back to divert the oil. So we are macerators running, PTO on to apply some pressure to the tank, get rid of it. We want to come down some gears. Let the pressure just build a smidge more. Right, do the other spool valve, that allows the, opens up the tank and you'll see the flow rate is going up now. And away we go. That should get up to around about 120 meters cubed an hour. That's the total we've put on so far, 66 cubed. And uh, we're about 12 and a half, 13 cubed as it's uh, measuring on the flow meter, so. Like I say, this is the, yeah, yeah, the fifth load. No, sixth load, isn't it? Yeah, six, one, two, yeah, this is the sixth load. As you can probably see on the camera there, you can't, pro you know, you can, you can make out the wheel ends of my last pass, but it's very difficult to see where the slurry was, uh, you know, dribbled on lot. You can see better out the side window here. Then you sort of match that up with the look out the back. And we're just we're over a, about a foot over. But uh, I'd rather just go over a little bit and uh, miss it. So, like I say, like I say, not the easiest when you haven't got guidance or auto steer. But, you know, we're coping. We are coping. There we go. That's our empty. Uh, so we need to disengage that. Back to fold. Fold up. Got some gears. Oh, we're going to get another load. That's it, we are folded. Valve shut. 78 cubes so far. And that's our sixth load, so uh, we should, what's the time? 20 to 3. We're doing about half an hour a load. So it should get another six, seven load in quite an easy lot. For tea time. Now, Mucker is, uh, he's just released a video a few days ago, uh, as I record this. Um, now he's given away, given away another tractor. Um, not my thing, it's a little Force and Dexter. Um, but uh, it's a sweet enough little tractor. I just like the bigger stuff. But um, if you would like the chance to win uh, a little tractor, and he's going to be doing it up um, over a series of videos and that lot, um, go over there and have a look. Because, like I say, he's going to auction it off uh, five or a go. And the winner, um, well, the winner will win the Dexter. Um, but uh, the proceeds are not going to go into. A, um, his uh, bank account for you know for his just for men um, addiction like you know is for the old, uh, the old just for men. Not going to go into that account. No, it's going to go into. Uh, well, it's going to go to the uh, pre-loved um, border collies, uh, which is a you know charity that Mucker has supported for a long time, long long time, and that's where lovely Sean come from. His lovely border collie. Um, which is basically Ted's girlfriend or fiance. They haven't actually tied the knot yet, but um, you know, Ted, my colleague, um, him and Sean, you know, they're, they're, they're boyfriend and girlfriend. 
Um, but uh, yeah, Muck has supported the, you know, the pre-loved Border Collies for a long, long time. Really worthy um, cause. They do very good work, and you know, if anything like me and love dogs, it's it's well worth charity. So all the all the funds are going to there. So head on over to um, to Muck's channel and have a look. Pretty much. Um, even though I'm, you know, I really, I you know, wouldn't. I really wouldn't like it. Um, I'll probably still have a go just to, you know, donate a bit of money to the, to the charity. So, um, yeah, like I say, go and have a look anyway. Go and have a look. You know, I was struggling earlier to see the line. Well, it dawned on me. Simple idea. I don't know why I didn't think of it earlier, but to make life a lot easier, what I'm doing, when I'm getting to the end of the run, and I'm empty, and I'm spinning back round, I'm just running uh, my inside tyre on the edge of what I've done. So that when I'm spreading, like I'm spreading now, I can see over. Um, there's the mark where the tyre's been. I can see that quite easily now. So I'm actually really accurate again. Don't know why I didn't think of it earlier, but. Right, well, I'm just putting the last load on for the for the day. About about half five. So the time I get back should be about six o'clock. Just in time for me tea. I think what's that? Twelve loads today. About that, something like that. So um, I've got to take it off tonight. Like I said earlier, we're short on tractors. Well, I'm short on tractors because uh, we've got a muck out Wednesday, the muck out morning. So the three load of muck to do tomorrow morning, and I'll sit the tanker back on. Hopefully, finish that field. I mean, uh, that's the plan anyway. Um, <clears throat> Now I just wandered up here, spin you around, now, this is me <laughs> trailer, now it looks pretty much, well definitely identical to uh, the last time you see it, I've still not uh, welded that bit back in, I've still not cut that off, I've still not cut the back uh, uh, bit off the bumper, but um, you know things are sort of you know, the nights are getting a bit lighter now, it's getting a bit warmer. I'm going to start doing a bit on this now, get it, uh, get it ready, like. Because I've got a, um, a company coming down to, when well, I've, you know, shot blast it. Once I've done all the metal work, you know, I've got the steel to put the headboard on, all that. Um, so I've got them all sort of prepped for it and ready for it. But i uh, just got to get the welder out and get everything done. And like I say, once everything's done, and uh, everything's well done, all the metal work's done. This company, you now I'll tell you about this company when um, you know, we'll get, you know, when I'll start doing a bit of work on the trailer. But uh, I've got a company very kindly off coming off to shop blast it for me, so um, that'll be cool. So, I mean, obviously, that means I can then give it a lovely paint job after, so she'll look absolutely mint. That's the idea, anyway. So, uh, yeah, better luck next few weeks. We'll get, uh, we'll make a start on that. Get, uh, get that going, lot. Then I might have a tractor to put uh, on the front of it. You never know. <laughs> there we go. That's today done. Cold bugger. That's a cold old wind still. Northeasterly wind. Anyway, we're looking, uh, looking pretty good. You can't tell what I've done, can you? Which is ideal. It's what we're after. You know, you're not. Um, absolutely covering the plant you're putting it slurry where you want it on the ground so uh, yeah no this uh, slurry quick drill bar is proven to be a good bit of kit I am gonna head home because it's home cooked fish and chips tonight and I'm hungry so anyway I hope you enjoyed that uh, uh, little video another slurry video but that's the way it goes isn't it so uh, don't forget to check out Mucker's vid the link will be uh, the link will be in, uh, well, probably somewhere around here now. So click on it and go and have a look. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. See you on the next one. Ta-ta!